everybody. Welcome to TK and Drinks. Another episode of What's the Story. We've got uh, my man Calvin Green. We are being graced with his presence today from Black's Ferry Meadery there out of Texas. How you doing today, Calvin? Man, I am living the dream. Couldn't be better, brother. Couldn't be better. Awesome, man. That That's fantastic to hear. Well, again, um, as I said many times before, I, I love uh, your guys' products. I love uh, talking with you and um, the... Uh, that just being able to be your friend and, and being involved in your guys' world and everything is a true blessing in my life. So uh, thank you guys so much for that. that. That means a lot. That means a lot. Right on, my man. So um, let's, uh, if we could start off with a little like backstory. What's uh, what's this backstory with Black's Ferry Meadery? What, what started your journey down the mead making road? So uh, initially I was, working at Dow Chemical, you know, and um, I worked at the chemical plants and my supervisor, her name was Jen Swadron, a phenomenal woman. She says, Calvin, yo, you want to come out to a meeting tonight? She was like, it's a beer meeting. It's a brew meeting. I was like, okay. Okay, so what y'all going to be doing at the brew meeting? Y'all got any beer over there? She's like, listen to me, you know, that side I like for you going to have me there. But like, so, you know, I ended up going with her because she told me it would be some beer there. So I called my wife. I'm like, hey, babe, it's going to be a really neat opportunity. Let's go check it out, see what, what rocks with it. So we go to the meeting, and then I end up uh, meeting one of the original owners there. Her name was Tracy. Co- her name was. It is Tracy Kufus. Oh, snap. Okay, so here I'm back. But her name is Tracy. Okay, cool. So her name is Tracy Kufus. So she came up to me, and she's like, Calvin, um, have you ever had me before? And I was like, nah, what's mead? I just had a burger, you know, I ain't I ain't really hungry right now. Mead? She's like, yeah, mead. I was like, okay, what is it? She tells me it's, it's, it's made from honey. I was like, uh, uh, honey wine? She's like, Calvin, try it. So Tracy, you know, I know a lot of people know about her in the brewing community, very talented. She ended up putting uh, me on some orange blossom. Uh, so orange blossom, it was made with orange uh, hu- orange honey. It's actually steeped in blossoms and cells, really floral in character. I tasted that. I saw unicorns and rainbows. I was like, bro, I got to do this. Like, I, I got to make me some meat. So then I had me a milk carton, and then I had a, a, a little a piece of plastic, like, uh, what was that, saran wrap on top. I was ready to make me some meat. Oh, wow. Crazy. Nah, nah, it's not how we get down. So, you know, I had to really learn a couple of things, but... Tracy and I and my wife, we started brewing together every weekend. Uh, we formed a relationship, and that's really how it kicked off. And uh, it, it's really neat, though, out of all the stuff we brewed, because we started out with, like, five gallons up in the um, in the kitchen. Then it went to, to ten gallons. Then we got it in the living room and the stairs and the washing machine. I mean, we got meat everywhere, right? And I'm like, I, I look at Tracy, look at my wife, I'm like, yo, why don't we just start a business with this thing and see what rocks? I mean, I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur. Uh, you know, I've always wanted to go for it to see what I can make check on my own without having to work for corporate. I mean, because it, it is a blessing to have a job, don't get me wrong, but you always want to try to see if you can just stand on your own too. So we end up going to make the business. And from there, the first wine me and my wife came up, the first flavor we came up with, ended up winning uh, third place in Mavis. So, I mean, it's crazy. And, and we haven't been in the game. There's so other, many other uh, talented, like, uh, meme makers, like uh, Ron out at Mystic Oak. I mean, you got, like, uh, the Rohans up there at uh, uh, Rohan. And then it's, like, uh, John and Wendy. You got so many talented meat makers in Texas. And for us, the place was, like, huge. So that's when they let me know, you know, because <laughs> – you know how you used to do back in the day when you taste Kool-Aid, you all know how sweet it is. It just be like, mm, that's good right there. So <laughs> never, never measure nothing. You just pour stuff in a jug and rock with it, right? So <laughs> that's how I used to make mead. And then like when uh, back in the day, they'd be like, Calvin, so what was your formulation? I'd be like, uh, I prayed about it. That's it. I ain't got no formula. What you mean? I'm supposed to write something down. So there's been like so many things you learn just by, by uh, going and, and really being a part of this process. But I say all that to say, too, like, there's so many other uh, talented meat makers. And for us to, to place and me not even have a real process developed at, uh, at first, man, it's, it's just been a blessing. So we've just been trying to ride it out and then just enjoy all the opportunities that have been afforded to us. So it, it's been neat, man. There we go. 
Dude, I've been having internet connectivity issues in my house for the past two weeks. I apologize. I, I can't promise that won't happen again. <laughs> I ain't nothing to apologize about. I just started drinking, so hey, it's all good. Turn up. Uh, well, let's get into that real quick before we uh, get back into the line of questioning. What are we turning up with tonight? What you, what, what's on deck for you? Nah, I, I was trying to be sophisticated, so you know, I went with I was just playing. I went with some Crown and Coke. <laughs> it ain't nothing fancy. Crown I've been sipping Coke. on that. Yeah, yeah. I've been sipping on that, so nice. just have, chilling, you know, a little pregame before we hang out tonight. Right on. I can dig that, my man. Um, <laughs> So, uh, what year did you guys get the whole metery thing started and everything? Like, what, like, what year did you guys decide to go to commercial? So it was, it was crazy. Like, we made a decision in 2017 in June. It was like we went on a, a frantic run. Like, found a building and one giving a shout out to the uh, mayor of West Columbia uh, and uh, Becky Wilson. That's the uh, the woman who we actually leased the building from they've been instrumental in Blacks Ferry. Like, seriously, without those two, especially, there would be no Blacks Ferry. But uh, we, we were looking for a building. The mayor comes and she says, hey, Calvin, you uh, ever talked to a woman named Becky? I was like, Becky, uh, I remember her because she used to work at the high school, you know, when I went back in the day. And uh, I know her kids graduated from there too, but I was like, nah, I, I haven't really talked to her. She's like, well, she's running out of building. So I was like, cool. And that was probably, um, we gave her a proposal. So we ended up uh, talking with the mayor and Becky Wilson, and then we were able to uh, be it's a corner lot off 35 in West Columbia. So it's prime real estate. And uh, from there, we, we just started to, to work on the building. At first, it used to be an old law office. So we put in a lot of work. We were grinding. I mean, like putting a lot of that sweat time. We were painting walls, you know, scrubbing floors. We, we right. put that food on. Like, to go see the back of my building, like, we built a pergola back there. It's like a whole little vibe. We were putting so much time and effort, but it was all Becky letting us do it, and it went off the suggestion of the mayor. Uh, they've all been supportive of us here, like, promoting us and get ready to get the event to us, whatever we're trying to do. So without those two people, last year would not be here. So Dang, so shout out to them for sure. Yes. Thank you, Ed Wilson and Mary Cannon. Hello, thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right on, my man. Uh, how long were you guys homebrewing before you decided to go commercial? Oh, it was it was probably just like a couple of months. Like <laughs> I, I say, it was like six months. Like I said, it's like like I'm making that old grandma Kool Aid. They'd be like, "Ooh, that tastes good. I'm gonna do it." Like. We, we really didn't have any formulas. The experience came from um, having someone like Tracy. And um, like I said, just to give her a shout out, she's been, she, she really was. She, she's no longer with the company, but she was uh, vital in our success. So forever, she'll be recognized as a part of us coming up and being where we are today. She was one of the original founders. So we went on her experience at first to get us to a certain point. And then from there, we uh, it, it's just like, Texas meat makers, they're open in communication. Like, if I got a question, I can go knock on anyone's door out here. We got like 16 meteries out here right now. You can talk to anyone, pick on different experience levels to get what you're looking for to try and improve your product and get what you, the best product you can get, right? So, when I got to a certain point, I got confused. One of my mentors, like I said, besides uh, John and Wendy Rohan, has been uh, Ron. And Ron has been pivotal. Like, we switched up the game to where we went to a Cosmos schedule, like Total Organic Stagger, Nutrient Edition schedule. Like, going to that, I think, really uh, made our flavors crisper, cleaner. And that's all shout out to him for, for really mentoring me and helping me along the process of brewing. Because I'll tell anybody, you ask me, like I said, I'm just going to be like, mm, good. But he, he really did mentor me, too, and making sure I have my calculations right. I'm getting the right equipment to make these we have the correct alcohol percentage like he really has helped me so much in this process so it, it, it's just like family around here and that's why i love it me making you think you get into it and it's just like a closed off little sector you got a time to survive like it's mean streets of honey you know like you know ain't everything sweet you feel me but it, it really is you meet good people and you end up growing with them and uh and ron really helped me grow 
as a mean maker, me and my wife uh, as a mean maker uh, out here in, in, in Texas, me making. So, and Ron is from where, who is Mystico. Mystico. Mystic Oak. Mystic what? Mystic Oak Meadery. Oh. He's, I mean, he is so knowledgeable, like very knowledgeable. I love talking to him. And, and him and Jim, let me give a shout out to Jim because uh, he works with Jim is over at uh, France Stone Winery and he, uh, there, Jim, he's like the, I guess you would say he's like the owner of it all, but Ron is like the second hand that does a lot of the technical as well. But um, Jim and Ron, they really have helped Blacksbury out. So I don't want to exclude Jim. He really is awesome too. So those have been two, two huge, huge people with our, our meat making that have helped us get to where we are. Nice. Um, so in those, uh, you know, in your three, four years of operation now, um, what would you say is the your favorite mead that you guys have produced? Like, like I said, I think it'd be that black currant lime. Oh yeah, black currant lime first flavor that we and my, my wife and I actually made together, and uh, we we sat down, thought about the flavor profiles, and, and then uh, just went with it. And that was more off of a gut feel. And then we backed out and then started to get, you know, our, our couch and, and write down our formulation off of that. But it was just really something we did out of love and enjoyment of the craft. So to me, that's something I always, always cherish. Gotcha. Yeah, I really liked your Black Lime Current one. My favorite one from you guys is the, is the uh, Black Current Cacao one, though. Man, that thing... That thing slaps harder than than anything I, I've had in a long time, man. I, that's a personal favorite of mine, man. The, the way you a, achieve the the flavor and that chocolate across there. How did you guys incorporate the cacao nibs in that? So it actually went in primary. So uh, yeah, we put it in primary and then we just let it sit. And it's crazy, like this last batch I got, it just has like this. I don't know. It gave it like a smoky flavor, even from the cacao nibs that I had before. So again, like my consistency, I ain't gonna lie, I'm still trying to learn how to hit it every time on the mark. But like, the different flavors I'm getting like now from letting it sit a certain amount of time, uh, it's just, I'm, I'm learning so much. So uh, that that flavor to me has even improved since when you tasted it last. I'm gonna have to hook you up with a bottle. But, and, that, and that's another thing too, to just point out like people be like, Calvin, you must've been doing this for years. Like, man, I tell you what, I. It ain't been years, but we it's been four years in the game now, but it's really going off the help and mentorship of others and then just having a dream and going for it. I know I'm not the best meat maker out there, but I just try and do what I do and hope it, it works out for the best. Got you. And, and then you improve your management. I say that. I just don't YOLO all the time, but, you know, you uh, make sure you have management systems you continually improve with, with advice and mentorship from others. So. Perfect. Definitely being able to take positive uh, feedback or to take a positive um, like connotation out of negative feedback and stuff like that, or be able to just, um, you know, assimilate what you're being told, everything, be able to uh, process that information and grow your business and, and turn that into a, a positive experience, man. That's a, that's a necessary thing in the business world. If you can't, uh, if you can't say, what's, what's the term, like have duck feathers, roll with the punches, you know, yes. Exactly, exactly. You're going to have a bad time. <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, so what about any, like, uh, what's the, what's the, any meads that, like, never made it to market or kind of came out sideways on you or anything like that? Like, uh, it was the root beer mead we had made. We couldn't get the formulation from um, the company we're trying to do, but I actually enjoyed it when we originally made it. And then uh, another one was a pea blossom that was pretty good. Tracy made, never made it to market. Um, we've come out recently with a um, with a blueberry. Uh, it's pretty decent, and I'm still working on. It. I ain't quite quite got it right. Uh, we have a lemon meringue. Uh, I got a couple little flavors we're still working on, like a strawberry pineapple kiwi. I got to do little test batches, so I'll take little one gallons and then just see what I come up with. Some of them don't turn out too well. Like, I, I tried to uh, do one with, like, a margarita mix. Oh. I don't know. But you think it would be good, right? It did not turn, to, did not turn out good. 
Okay. You're not, but you know, seeing that I'm a man, I had to drink it. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna let it go away. But you know, it didn't turn out good. So it's like not everything for me turns out great. But I just I go for it, you know. And, right. and that's the thing I learned. You just you just go for it, see what happens. So can't be scared when making some mead. Right now, you guys do make a straight lime mead, though. That I mean, that could basically be like a start, like a mixer for a margarita or something like that. Yes, yes, and like speaking of that, we're actually in. Um, it's like we're in. I think it's three restaurants right now. So yeah, with uh, with where they call it a meterita. Nice. Yeah, 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 and I've so, seen you guys have been doing um, like the slushy things and the daiquiris and the different like drinks and all that stuff. You guys have been doing that. Uh, like I said, I've just. I've been doing this mead thing now for just over a year, year and it well, since like April, it would be a year. Um, but like you guys have been pretty much on that since, since I started doing this thing. Like how, yeah. long, how long have you been doing the slushies? And is that like a down south thing where it started? Because I, I see a lot well, of meaderies that are jumping on that bandwagon now. Yeah, like I actually had peep game from uh, Wendy from Rohan, and she was like, "We got a slushy machine. We use it." So I was like, "I'll try it out too." So. I mean, people seem to really enjoy it. And oh, yeah. then, like, mixing, though, like, a lot of people who are purists don't really like, you know, it's just meat is meat. You don't mix with anything. And it, and it is good, for real. I love meat how it is. But then it's just the creative aspect of it. Like, like we take that black currant lime, mix it with a riscato. We call it a um, fairy review. I mean, it's delicious. And oh. so it's like, doing things like that, especially, like, when you're rocking in a small town, West Columbia, you got to give them some different things to look at. It's not like we... Back before COVID, I had um, people making a pilgrimage. They come and check us out, you know, rock with us and uh, really enjoy our flavors. Now, you know, uh, coming pre-COVID, uh, right before it really hit, and then post-COVID, we got to get creative. So whatever we can do to get them through the doors, we got to make sure we hit ourselves. So that's awesome. I, I love that idea, and you got them to sell them to go, and you. Uh, uh, yeah. and the meteoritas, I've seen you have like a giant margarita glass with a bottle plugged into it and everything like that. <laughs> yeah. It's a business, man. I'm, I'm digging that. I, I, I can be on board. I need to get me one of those. Oh, most definitely. Will you come down? It's on me, dog. I got oh, you. That's what's happening. <laughs> um, so there at Black's Ferry Meadery, when you're doing your, um, when you're processing and fermenting and doing all your things, you guys, uh, a back sweeten place? Do you like to ferment to target sweetness? Do you do a combination of the two? What's your what's your druthers there? Yeah, like we like to uh, uh, ferment to our target sweetness, but like if we have to back sweeten, we will. So we do test it, you know, before it goes out, make sure we're like hitting somewhere around the mark where it should be. But yeah, we like to make sure we target a certain sweetness level, hitting it, and hopefully our numbers, most of the times they are, we've refined the process now, are coming out right about where we want. Gotcha. That's a see, and I, I've always had a since I've been doing this, I had a, a thought about whether it was better to to back sweeten or to to ferment to target sweetness, and you know I personally can't really tell a difference on how it's done, so I guess it really doesn't um, play a huge role in it. I guess it's more of just a like a personal preference type of thing. Yeah, yeah, most definitely, most definitely. Um, see here. So if you're going out on a hot day, say you're going out on a hike or you're going out uh, you know, to a picnic or something uh, to kick back something, what you get, you can bring a bottle with you and you got room for one bottle. What are, what are you bringing? Ooh, man. I say I say that lime, man, that lime. But it has to be the, the right lime. Like, all right, so as we know, like, fruits are seasonal. And another thing I learned being in this business is that if you brew a batch, you always got to keep, like, a certain stock of a batch if it's really slamming. Because, like, I had I had did this lime that was really floral. It was just, like, fresh on the top. Like, everything was just, like, mm, about this lime. See, that's how you know it's good. You can't explain the words. You got to make mm noises. So, this stuff was mm. Right. And so, I, I, I make, this, make this lime, and then I turn back around. It's later on in the season. And then I try – because I get my limes from H-E-B. And I, I, I hand juice everything, right? So I'm real old school with it. And so I do all this juicing. I make this lime batch. I'm expected to get the, the same type of flavor and feel, mouthfeel and everything. Turns out, like, it was just tart and just, it wasn't good. And so 
I was like, man, what happened? So come around again, it was, uh, it probably was a year before I got those same type of lines I first had, but that taught me that, uh, and, and then I asked, again, Ron was a big person who helped me out. This is just like whenever you're brewing, like maybe half your batch if it's slamming, save it. If it's like a me- mediocre batch, save half because you can blend. Yeah. So if I'm not really hitting my target with some of the flavor profiles I'm looking for from from what I'm brewing, I'll tend to blend to make sure I, I get to what I'm looking for. And I have enough good to outweigh the bad. There you go. Yeah. So it, like I said, it's been learning for me. It really has been. I'm, and I'm still learning on so much. So. Well, you should probably never stop learning. Learning is one of my uh, favorite things to do, man. Like to 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 gain knowledge is, is to is one of the greatest things that you know you can do as a human being to to expand oh, yeah. your mind. Oh yeah, and it's and it's been one of those things for me. Like it wasn't immediate that I came up with all of these processes. Like I really had to put time in because I came into the business originally more on a business side. So like for brewing in general, like. When you talked about bricks, I'm like, yo, we not, we don't need no bricks around here. We're not trying to build nothing. Like it, it's like I'm, I'm that like you know green at everything. You feel me? So it's like it's really has been a process for me to understand how all of this works. So having to transition from purely a business sense to a brewing side, like I said, it, it was it was a. Uh... <laughs> I was out. About... What's happening? I said, what's up, dog? Oh, what's happening? Looks like you're on the move, on the travels. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just walking around. I got you. Um, so, totally. I said, so blind, that was like gold. Like, it was it was off the chain when it cut out. I was like, oh, snap, that was beautiful. It was beautiful. Of course, man. My, that's been my whole, that's been my whole week. This whole week's been just like, one kick in the nuts right after another. It's like, ah, boom. Fuck, man. So let's, uh, I don't know if you want to try to finish that line again, or I can just go on to the next question. I think it was something like, it takes a village to raise a child. And yes. it also takes a village to raise a meat maker. I uh, there was something deep like that for it. I don't even remember. <laughs> but it, if even if it wasn't that, that's a very true thing, man. It, it does. It takes a it takes a, a strong community to work together to bring up a, a business like that, man. And that's a that's cool that your community is so supportive of you. Um, yeah. Do you guys uh, you guys do a lot of like events in your community, or do you guys host a lot of events for your community? Yeah, like. Uh... We we do a lot of events in our community. Like we'll do um, me. The, what I like to do is I sponsor the kids that they'll come for like uh, softball. Like we're doing football this year, but I've done quite a few uh, softball uh, sponsorships. I do uh, like the tutoring and mentorship. So like I offer free SAT and uh, ACT tutorials. So right. I'm able to help out with that as well. Cause like people don't know my swag is strong, but I'm a big nerd. Like I ain't gonna lie, I'm a big nerd. So uh, like I've been able to really help them, like kids in the community with their their uh, math or reading skills. So that's something you know I do as well. Very cool, man. That's something to super be commended. That that's uh, an unspoken need uh, everywhere in in the country, man. So, is people that have a skill that are willing to share it with younger people. Um, not not only share that with them but like try to present it to them in a way that's going to make it interesting and engaging to them so mm-hmm. doing that man that's almost more important than the meat making man I, I tell you like if I, I love meat i really do but like if the meat didn't have a direct effect to somehow affect the community in a positive light then for me it all be it wouldn't be worth it so like when they come in and we're able to give back whatever it is, even if it's ten dollars to me, that makes that makes it worth it. And I love to see the smile on their face when they try their try our product. But it's just it is the fact we're able to give back, even if it's a little bit. That that's what it's all about to me. Right on, man. That that warms my heart to hear that. That I I knew you were good people. <laughs> appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um. So now that you 
seeing that you said you guys were in a couple of restaurants with the um, lime mead garitas uh, and all that stuff, do you guys do like uh, food pairings with your meads and stuff too? Like we were gonna do a food pairing with Saloon Door, but uh, that ended up not going through COVID because of COVID. So it's like we made, I'm telling you, we were, we were cruising, cruising pre-COVID. Like we really were knocking down some doors and it's just fortunate off the connects we made. Like you just run across good hearted people and they just seem to be sprinkled in my path. You know, like I can't even take credit for the, the places we were getting to like, like a uh, craft beer seller. Y'all check them out in Houston. They're, they're really dope. They carry our product. Um, <laughs> It's just been so many. I want to start naming names and leave people out, but it's really been a lot of neat people that I met across my path that have uh, carried us, and and it's just put us on to other stuff. So pre-COVID, we were going to be grooving, but it's just been one of those things we got to try and fight back now after everything's, you know, gone through or whatever. Now, did you find that COVID was – would you say COVID was detrimental to your business or just made you like kind of shift and go in like an alternate direction? Cause a lot nah. of, Oh, go ahead. No, 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 no. Finish your statement. You good. You good. I say a lot of meteries I saw kind of, um, not all of them, but I say more meteries than, than not, you know, alternated their business, went to the all online model and the, you know, the, the online pickup uh, curbside type thing. And then a lot of places actually even, um, like upscaled, you know, and, and whatnot. So uh, it doesn't seem to me that the, I use the term loosely, like the alcohol industry was hit that, um, that brutally compared to some of the other places. Yeah, it, um, it hit me hard. Like it was detrimental because like I had good in-person sales, like, uh, so, so a big portion of my business, and this was me in my inexperience, but I'm, Who's thinking a pandemic's gonna come around, right? Nobody. So like when I planned really for the business, it was gonna be more engaging with individuals. So my profit margins were set up from festivals, they were set up from um engaging with individuals that like when we got into specs and total wine, like it was all about that in person interaction. Cause I wanna my thing is I don't wanna have a customer, I wanna create a friend that becomes family. Like, that's the vibe we get. When you come in, I want you to be able to kick off your shoes. If I see you in person, like, just come rock with me. Like, Calvin is Calvin all day. So that was what I was going for initially because I wanted to establish uh, a rapport with individuals that came in, right? But once COVID hit, that shifted everything. And then me, I'm I'm thinking, because I'm listening to people that are like, nah, it's going to bounce back in like a year. I didn't really try and shift my business model, which wasn't smart. It really wasn't. I was like, well, I just try and boost up on myself a little bit. I don't want to really focus on that because me interacting with people is what I enjoy. So I was trying to keep that same vibe. But now it, it is. It, it's, it's caused me to try and put money towards, uh, you know, getting a, a website, our, bettering our website so that we can up our online sales and whatnot. And then, honestly, I'll tell you this because I'm transparent. So – after it was probably like um, it was probably like nine ten months ago, we had made a decision like all right, I'm seeing that we are gonna have to make that transition for online sales. Mm -hmm. So I got a company, you know, and this is me just dumb and dumb business decision. I got a company to help me out. That company wasn't a legit company. It took thirty five hundred dollars from it. So when you talk about like taking hard L's and this type of thing, like. It's been one of those things we, we've had to really learn and adapt and grow. And now I actually have good people working on my website and we're starting to uh, figure out the vision for Black Sherry. But this has been a growing process, man. And we've had to grow through some, some pain, you know what I'm saying? But we're, we're bouncing back. We really are. Yeah, I remember uh, I had talked to you on the phone not too long after that had happened. We were chopping it up. And, man, that that was a that was a rough experience, man. I, it is. Dude, that hurts. It, uh, it's like coming from, like, like I said, we're small town West Columbia, so it's like everybody here. He's we're family. The the police chief back in the day when I was trying to uh, skip the sign to get me a slush, he caught me and called my mom and dad. Like it's that type of feel. So the one of the hard lessons in learn to learn in this is like just because 
you have a heart down here, it doesn't mean like you get outside of this small community, it's cutthroat. You know what I'm saying? So you, you really got to be careful when you're trying to negotiate deals or making. And, and, and the cool part is I did my uh, background check. I went through the Better Business Bureau. They were cool from what I, they had a couple of complaints, but it, it's they, they, they took our money. So it's, it's just one of them L's you, you learn with the game, but you just keep going and make the most of it. It's a dog eat dog world out there, man. And I got hair on. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. Dude. Um, so uh, if you were um, going to travel outside like your region and everything like that, and you're going to go visit a meadery or two out, you know, uh, like who, who are you going to check out? Who's like on the top of your, your like meadery visit bucket list, so to speak? That's a good question. I uh, I'd have to say superstition. Yeah, up there. So like, yeah, we uh had tasted one of their uh, PB and J meats. The peanut butter jelly crime. Yeah, that joint was delicious, and I think that's that's another one when we had first started that uh, people were bringing to a brew meeting, and we got to sample. But I mean, it was off the chain, so. Uh, and then I like did my research on them and they look really neat and interesting to visit. And then like Moonlight, like, cause I tried to check out the, the, the big dogs. Like, so like just being able to see their process, you know, and what we could be would be neat as well. So I guess those would be the two I wanted to see out of, you know, out of Texas. Yeah. You can't, uh, you can't get to be that scale of a business without doing something right. You know what I mean? You can't have that type of longevity, that type of success without doing something right in some capacity. So that tells me that there's something to be learned there and, you know, and, and paying attention to, to what they do could probably benefit anybody in the business. Exactly. Exactly. Just seeing those successful models, taking what little nuggets you can to make yourself better. So yeah, most definitely. Yeah. One of the things I, one of my favorite things that I learned from a, one of my uh, college professors was, um, you know, take what you leave, take what you need and leave the rest. You know, you can go there, study what they do. Like, Hey, this applies to me. I really like this. Like, even as somebody who doesn't homebrew yet, I've watched tons of homebrew videos and, um, you know, and try to get, a try to get a sense of like how I want to operate when I'm do when I am doing my homebrews. I want to make sure that, uh, you know, I'm not wasting my time, energy and resources because honey's expensive. Time is certainly not, you know, getting any easier to come by. And it's just something that I want to make sure that I, uh, I don't abuse those things when it, when it comes down to it. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. Just being strategic. Yes, strategic. Like, uh, um, like and I know your question was tailored towards, uh, like, who would I visit outside of Texas? Like, yeah. well, but, but, like, I tell you, Texas – People, people sleeping on Texas. Me, boy, we got some bad meters in Texas. And I know I only named two, and I want to put this out there too. Just because I named two, like I got, I don't want to miss people. That's why I don't like naming the names. But oh, like when we're our um, Texas meat fest, like it's gonna be a Rohan. Like you come out, and if you were to taste, I mean, all the meters out here, they're hitting the mark. And like I said, it's all family and love. When you see one another, we're all we're all talking, chopping it up. You know, just it's just so much love. So, and their meat is phenomenal. It's phenomenal. So yeah, Texas meat is where it's at. It's hey, y'all ain't know. This is the show that I'm not, I'm not one to say, keep names out your mouth, man. If you want to put names out there, this is like, I haven't seen, I haven't had a lot of Texas meat. I've had your guys' stuff and I've had uh, Meridian Hive, mm -hmm. but like Rohan, Texas Mead Works. Um, who's that captain <laughs> for us, Dallas? Is that a uh, breaking brew up there? Um, I mean, there's a, there's a man, uh, I'm dying to try all these different cats. I mean, I think Texas is, uh, it, like you said, people are sleeping on Texas and, and that's a real fortunate, um, real unfortunate situation. I, and I know there's a couple, was it Etois? I, I don't know if that's how it's pronounced. Uh, there's another, it, dude, there, Texas has got, got spots and it, I mean, you could do a whole meat adventure trip just through Texas and, and like, like, like everybody. I'm telling you, like, oh, and like, like John Odom, like, you got to check him out at Enchanted Manor, like, awesome. You got um, Dancing B, you got, um, 
High Cider Company, uh, Meridian High, like you said, Enchanted, uh, Enchanted Manor Meadery, uh, Mystic Oak Ron. Uh, let's see here. We got uh, what's another Walker Walker Farm. Yeah, say Walker Farm. Awesome. There you go. Yeah, they're awesome. Thirsty B. Um, just like there's Jeff Murray has one. He was a new one. Did I did I already say his meadery? No. Uh, uh, let me see. Let me find Jeff on here. But that's why I say I like I don't man. There's so many. It's 16 out here, and I don't, I don't have all the list in front of me. But uh, yeah, it's just Texas means where it's at, man. And just being able to come out, get the experience. Um, Wildflyer Jeff Murray, he's awesome. Me uh, make a good guy. But there's a uh, wildfire. Like there's so many uh, meteries just to come and hang out. You'd enjoy them all. So exactly. yeah, I can't. I, I feel bad for for getting wildflyer like that. I mean, yeah, they're yeah. Texas mead is definitely. Well, I mean, everybody always sleeps on the third coast, my man. You know what I mean? The I'm telling. Third. I'm telling you. It, it is. Yeah, I, I had a friend from Texas that many, many, many moons ago put me on to the whole. Uh, dirty third and all that type of stuff. And ever since then, I've been trying to pay as much attention to Texas as I can. A lot of cool shit that comes out of that way. Oh yeah, most definitely, most definitely. And I, and I, I say also the the people in Texas, the heart of the people. You, you couldn't you couldn't meet kinder people. So that's good to hear, my man. Do you guys have a um, subscription or a bottle club or anything like that going on? No, nah, that's part of what I'm trying to get set up now. You know and and honestly, with the, I'm moving some good inventory right now. But before I really open that up, I want to make sure that I'm able to supply everybody. So, cause all I rock with is 375 mil bottles. I don't do no 750s. Right. So that, that's what makes me unique too. I'm going with smaller bottles, but I just want to make sure that I have the inventory to supply if we end up kicking off hard. So. Do you plan on expanding out to not necessarily uh, larger bottle sizes, but um. Like, I don't see you guys doing any barrel age stuff or any like uh, pochets or braggots or anything like that. It's all pretty much standard stills right down the middle of the lane. So, exactly, exactly. Like, I've been looking into it. Like, I wanted to do some session meads, you know, mm -hmm. and like um, get some stuff canned potentially. Uh, I haven't really knocked down the flavor profiles on that yet, actually. So, I'm just, I'm experimenting, but. Like right now, we're just gonna rock with the steels until, uh, and then I think we'll keep the same bottle size. I say, like, if I could build inventory within the next, say, like seven to eight months, uh, then we'd be able to to roll out and maybe, um, you know, upsize our bottles. But I gotta, I gotta get back into the to, to producing a whole lot more than I have right now. Got you. Um, do you have? plans on adding like a barrel aging program or a, an experimental needs program or anything like that? Like, yeah, I, I do. I have a little uh, workshop where we make all our experimental meads and okay. then I just give them away, you know, cause I can't sell them. A lot of them, I don't have my uh, formulation and stuff. So they're just free. I let people sample and give me their opinion. But like right now I just, I like rocking with what I like sack meads. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I tell people, like uh, like I said, it, just going back to the Kool Aid, you know, just making sure it's just that super sweet to make you talk. Like like I say, just super sweet. That's what I like. So Love it. you know, it's like sixteen percent and it's hitting hard. So oh yeah. Now you guys do one that I tried that was a dry passion fruit mead. What brought that <laughs> about that? Because that is totally like a left turn at ninety to uh, ninety miles an hour. That was a YOLO. Like, I, like again, that was early in the in the process. That was our first year because I remember that batch. So we, um, I made a ton of it too. Honestly, like back then, we were just trying to get inventory up to where we could get it out the door to sell it to make our presents because we had hit a, a a deadline of when we wanted to open up. So that one, even though it was dry and it's not like not not my swag, not my style, we still end up rocking with it. But um. That I think that's pretty much been the only dry one we really, really created here. Well, I take that back. We did a we did an elderberry that was pretty dry as well, but that's been early in Blacksberry days. That's when we were just dry pitching yeast in a thirty gallon and stirring and hoping it comes out. You know what I'm saying? So right. like, this has been like experimenting and 
come to where we are now, but that was early Black Sperry. So, yeah. mm-hmm. Now it's just purely sack me. I don't think we have anything that's dry. Um, do you, you have like a, a bottle library, so to speak, like a like a collection of older bottles from throughout the annuals of history, like in the in the. No, no, like that's one thing I, I thinking back now. I wish I could have had and and like when uh, my friends they'll keep them like some of my first bottles, just like how yeah. we're hanging on if you ever want them. But like that's something I I should have kept. My thing at the very beginning, like we opened up, it's like, let's try and smash profit, make sales. Cause I was more on the business side at the time. So uh, I wish I could go back and just share some of those first batches we made. Man, one of the batches I made too, it was like, I got some oranges and lemon. It was me, my wife and Tracy picking oranges and lemons at my house. <laughs> and then one of um, neighbors down the street gave me something, like I said, I hand squeeze and juice everything. So. You know, we can press just thinking about it, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. I know. But that's that's how we do it. That's how we do it. So nice. we um, we were we went uh, we picked those things and it was a um it was a orange lemon mead we made. And uh I tell you what, that was one of the best meads. And that was just out of stuff out of people's yards. And it was a thirty gallon. I've never made a mead to taste like that. That was like on par with the the um, orange blossom that I had first tasted from Tracy. Like it was that dope. I've never tasted a mead like, it. oh, but she made one too. It was pretty good. It was a uh, uh, salted caramel. That was pretty awesome. Ooh, that sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It had a smoky flavor, but it was dope. But yeah, so I, like I said, I learned so much from her. And like I said, although she's not here you know we do appreciate the time she spent to get us to where we are hopefully that so you still got some more time or yeah most definitely i got you if you could do a collab with any meadery outside of texas inside of texas uh who, who would that who's that you would pick i have to go with havoc and Grump. like i mean the reason is i know that guys slamming me but just, uh the heart of who they are uh vibe they give off like i mean they showed us love and let me let me go back and just say that you know like the covid has been tough for it but what they did was it was juneteenth you know so uh juneteenth they end up getting the shout out during that time those two meters brought in so many sales from telling people to, to like buy from our business you know african-american owned business to do that i mean They'll never understand how much it meant to me. And that just, that helped us get through even a tough time. Then it's like, I feel like, you know, I'm a, I'm a Christian. Like, I feel God sprinkles people in your life uh, at certain times. And for them to do that, I just want to, you know, on this cast, tell you podcast, tell, tell them thank you. And, you know, like, I'm getting a little emotional getting choked up saying this, but, but it's just, it <laughs> does mean a lot, man. Like, when you have people to look out for you, when, when, when you're, they don't even know you're in need, but just doing what they feel is right. It, it just, I don't know. It just, it did something for me and my wife. Like I can't even explain. So uh, I just want to, like, I would do a collab purely off of love. That's a beautiful thing, man. Uh, yeah, Ricky up there at, at Gronfell and Havoc. I have never had the uh, the pleasure of talking to him, but everybody that I know that has says he's a great person and they've got some fantastic products. I've heard nothing but um, wonderful things for a lot of their stuff. So I would love the opportunity to speak to them and everything. And yeah, so shout out to Gronfell Havoc. If you haven't uh, tried any of their stuff, definitely scoop them up. They're up out of uh, Vermont. So uh, I know they do tons of shipping. I know they got um, tons of different flavors. They're, they're, they're doing all sorts of fly shit all the time. So definitely scope out uh, Gronfell and Havoc meteries. Bye, 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 please. Yes, show, please. Show them love. Yeah, definitely. Give them all the love and admiration that you show anybody else. Um, if you're buying outside your region, definitely hit them up. All right, so yeah, so this is the portion where I'm going to come after you some rapid fire with some questions here. Um, burgers or pizza? Pizza. Pizza, he says. Uh, what's your favorite cereal from all time? Ooh. 
Why did Frosted Flakes pop into my mind? I don't know. Oh, that's <laughs> great. That's why. Oh, shit. <laughs> that's what's up. <laughs> I'm spilling shit everywhere, making a fucking mess. God damn it. That was the perfect setup, though. <laughs> that was right I'm on. A jackass. <laughs> You see my pants, dude. It looks like I just pissed myself. This is fucking atrocious. <laughs> it's just a little color. That's all it is. It's just a little color in the pants. That's nope. it. I'm gonna let that. I'm gonna let that chill for a bit. These are these these floors are safe or beer safe, so that that, that can hang out for a minute. Um, see here. Uh, uh, what's the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning? <laughs> Thank God I was able to wake up and see another day. <laughs> Uh, hot or cold? Ooh, cold. Me too. Big cold person. Ooh, I can't. I, I can't do this hot, humid weather here in Phoenix in the summertime. It drives me bananas, dude. It, I, it, I hate it. I don't know how you do it. I'm a big boy, 300 pounds. You know, I think Dude, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, do you cook? No, my wife cooks though. She cooking, she bringing the fire when she cooks? Man, like burning stuff, burning. I love it. Um, who influences you to cook, or who, who influences you in the mead world? Oh, man. Honestly, it's Ron. I, I respect, that's why I gave him a shout out. Like, Ron and Jim, I want to put them together. They work at but Ron and Jim, like, they show me so much love and like quit helping uh step up my process. Like I really do I, I appreciate the time they for me. But John and Wendy too, like uh they've been dope, so I don't wanna leave, ever leave them out because they, they helped us get our initial equipment and stuff and I do admire them as well. But like right now with I guess the actual uh brewing side I work a lot with uh, Ron. He, he just gives me nuggets of wisdom. Jim too. Jim too. They give me a nuggets of wisdom. So shout out to Mystic Oak Meadery. Yep. And then Rohan. Yeah, those those two have really been influential and instrumental. In if you could have any one superpower, what would it be? Oh. Uh, create money out of thin air. <laughs> create money out of thin air. That's a good superpower. I haven't heard that one yet. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, just make it like this and it just start raining. Like, boy, if I had that superpower, because there's so many dope things I want to do. Like, I want to help the community, build centers for the kids. Like, it's just, I would so give back and make sure everybody was taken care of, because that's the kind of heart I got. But, yeah. That's my man right there, picking a superpower that benefits the community over just himself. I mean, yeah, that's what it's about. If that doesn't speak to Calvin's nature, then I don't know what does, my man. That's that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, do you remember the first time you ever tried mead? Yeah, that was that was it. That grew me like, like I said, I and and I I chopped it up with Tracy. And, uh, my wife tasted it from there. Unicorns and rainbows, like, like she was. She was a really big part, and we'll forever be grateful for her. Her time to help us. What's the best mead you ever tried that you didn't brew? Mmm. Mmm. There've been so many. Ooh, that's a hard question. I don't want to answer that one. I don't want to answer that one. That's a good question. Uh, okay, like, who's somebody I say would be in the top five with no, like, distinguishing place? Like, what, mm. like if you had to throw something in, like, or, like, uh, like, the, like the desert island. Say you're going to a desert island and you got, like, three meads to bring with you. Like, like in no particular order. Oh, man. Oh, I, I, I hit you with the hard questions. Man. Oh, like, like, 
I'm a Texas me fan though, so I um not your stuff and not your stuff. Ooh wee! Like like I said, and I guess I'm like I know my stuff. It, it's great, but it can always improve. Like if I'm happy, people enjoy it. Like off the rip, but like there's some awesome Texas me that. Ooh, we, you don't put me on the spot. Like, oh man. Ooh, I, I just want to keep making noises. That's a hard one. I don't know. <laughs> just stretch like the seventh inning stretch. Just stretch it out. Stretch it out. You feel me? You feel me? Cause I, man, I like a part of me too. This is why I'm conflicted because I never want to leave anyone out. Like, uh, I'm the same way, man. I, I don't like to make any fe anybody feel excluded. Um, so, like, do you do you remember like with the first mead that just like kind of just like blew your mind? Other than like at your first at, at your first tasting, like you remember the first time you like really had a mead that just like like wow, this is just something like out of this world. All right, I can answer that one and not feel bad about it. Okay, had that like. And this is the first me besides the one I had at the brew me. The first uh, me that I had that really blew my mind was from Rohan. And that was, and then I got to taste a lot of other me's after that. But that was the other one besides a home brew that I tasted with that, Rohan cranberry. That was really phenomenal. You, I really. You said the Rohan cranberry. Your audio cut out. Yeah, it's that cranberry. It was a cranberry meat from Rohan. And that was the first one I, I tasted after the brew meat. Was it a dry? Was it a semi-sweet sweet? I mean, cranberry. It was, it was, yeah, it was a sweet, and I'm, I'm telling you, it, it, it's hard. So, But I've tasted many other good meats from there from Texas Brewery. I mean, meaters. I, I started thinking about being glad my mouth got low. Yeah, but like, yeah, other meteries, yeah, yeah. I'm tasting Texas me. I'm telling you, Texas me, you got to try. You're going to love it. There's so many awesome meteries, man. Um, how involved is your uh, wife with the business? Is this a family affair? Or is this um, uh, yeah, well, I, a side gig for her and you're kind of like the main head? Or how is it 50-50? Like, I, um, well, it's split, but, you know, as the main. You know what I'm saying? So when I say jump, she say how? Nah. Uh, we're this part, right? We're gonna, nah, I'm just playing. I'm playing. But, like, honestly, like, my wife, she she's really the business itself right now. Like, she's ground on. I just come in as the face, and I'll brew. But people, like, they see me as, you know, Calvin. He's just always, you know, he's the guy. But without her, there'd be no Black Sphere. Like, straight up. She's the one that handles all the business side. She handles all the the communication, setting up stuff. She's back here making test batches way better than mine. Like, she's talented. So I can honestly say, uh, you know, she really is that major figurehead because I work full-time as well. So for day-to-day, -day, she handles all that. So without her, there ain't no black spare. So shout, oh, shout out to Mama Green there holding things down. Yeah. Most definitely. Shout out to Tariq Green. Teresa Green holding it down, making Blacksberry a possibility for all of us to enjoy. Yes, yes, she really does. She does. I appreciate Dude, that's that's freaking awesome. I, I I love hearing that type of uh, you know, the the family affair, the the whole being able to bring um the family together and work on something. Do you guys have any kids you're bringing up? Ah, I'm trying to get some. So if anybody giving them away, just let me know, your boy. You know what I'm saying? Just tell me a deal. You feel me? <laughs> I got, hey man, I got two kids real cheap. I mean, they're already potty trained and everything. They they come with come with warranties and all that jazz. I got you, baby. <laughs> that's what's up. That's what's up. Like we 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 want to have them. You know what I'm saying? To just ask for it, but I would love a little one, man. I would love to keep. I love to keep. So if uh, money, time, resources weren't an issue, um, what would be, what would be the mead you would make? Um, what would be the mead you would make if money, time, and resources weren't an issue? Mm -hmm. Is there a particular like honey varietal you've been dying to work with? A particular expensive ingredient you've kind of uh, dodged because it's expensive or anything like that? 
That's a good question. I think, uh, I honestly go, I keep it simple. Like, the meat that I love to make and I do enjoy making is that black currant lime because I'm all about the memories and feelings behind it all. Like, when I make that, it, it brings back this, like, love and these memories of when we were in there just trying to figure it all out from the beginning. So for, we'll forever be the one that I'll, like, love me. I always I, I'd rock with black currant lime. The black. And, I, and, my, uh, and the honey we use for that is wildflower. So, yeah, do you get your honey from one source? Do you guys um, source? I tell people, sort of like gangster, like, I call him up. His name is uh, Will Rainey. And so I call Will up. I'm like, get it down. Back. Like, he'll come with a pump and everything. He's like, this. I got it in the barrel. Like, Will, and that's another person I feel bad about this. Without Will, there would not be the black space. Will has put so much time in. Shout out to Will. I appreciate him. He's been there holding our hands. Like when we've had the trouble stuff, he's been there with us. So Will has been a pivotal, pivotal part of this business as well. And I'm sad. I'm mad at myself. Not sad. I'm mad that I'm just giving him a shout out. But thank you, Will, for all that you've so, yeah. 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 Uh, you're cutting out a little bit there. What's the name of his uh, apiary there? It's a. Uh, his name is Will Rainey, but uh, he has yummy honey. But he actually flipped some of it over to like black, like because we sell. Well, so yeah, Will has been awesome. Will nice. Uh, I'll have to. Um, I'll get his uh, information from you so we can put it on the screen and all that jazz, so we can get him a get him a plug. Yeah. Yes. Um. See here. Uh, 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 uh. You do fruit on your pizza, like pineapple? That's so disrespectful. Like, did you say fruit on pizza? The first time I ever had pineapple on my pizza was in fucking Texas, homie. <laughs> nah, you been in the wrong part. Who put pineapple on pizza? Oh, no. No. What? You damn barbecue sauce instead of pizza sauce and pineapple on your pizza is the business. You best, you best write your congressman. Look, look, I, I normally am not like a guy to be like I, I usually got work, but you said pineapple on pizza. I can't even come back with nothing. You threw me off, man. Oh, dude. On dude, it's the business partner. Like, I love pineapple. <laughs> pizza that i grew up eating that it, it, it was the like a like a they call it a hawaiian pizza and like i know a lot of people have it with like traditional pizza sauce and then like canadian bacon and pineapple the way i grew up eating it wasn't with traditional pizza sauce it was with like a hawaiian style barbecue sauce and pineapple and then like bacon bits on there dude it was it is so so baller that sounds dope I, i'm gonna have to try this i take about the um, brother i appreciate that oh man um do we have any like upcoming like uh secret ingredients or anything like uh that we should be on the lookout from black's fairy in the coming weeks and in months uh, oh <laughs> we got any more uh secret ingredients well i mean just like like what do you want the people to be like on the lookout like what, what's coming up in the next couple of months that we should keep our peepers peeled for? Hmm. Really, honestly, I, so I'm starting to try and delve into a little bit of wine to make. Ooh, like fruit wines or grape wine? Fruit wine. Okay. All right, that's my new little thing. So I'm hoping we can come out, with, like I started to bring, called a wave on the war like we're trying to go for the new black so uh, 
Uh, yeah, yeah, you feel me, you feel me. So like that's been the the, the uh, I've been focusing on my with a little profile. Um, so that's that's something something else. Sleep right. Now. We're still working. I'm really picky, right? That's why, like, we're asking about ingredients. I, I I make a ton of like experimental batches, but if it's not like something that makes me go like. Mm. Right, when I, you know, I don't really rock with it. Even, like, I was trying to do different um, pieces of it, but I'm just looking for something to take my breath away. I haven't really found it. So that's why I didn't really comment on too much of my way. We do a ton of like, I found it. Like, I, I know it's good. It ain't making a noise when you taste it, like, <gasps> Oh, like if <laughs> you feel it, like yeah. if you ain't doing none of that, you know what I'm saying? And it ain't slamming. You feel me? You feel me? That's how I know it's good. So I haven't found anything like that yet. So uh, until I find a flavor like that, then I'll let y'all know what's up. But like, but like you said, you're kind of, you're you're always exploring opportunities and flavor profiles. You're out there searching and for the next uh, the next top the next big hit, the next the next thing, the next it thing. Exactly, exactly. Because it's the worst. Like, if I hype something up, if, you know, people want to have this, this good night. But if I really hype it up, garbage, then my feelings will be hurt. But, like, I've, I've run this criticism from each one. But when I, when I know it's good in my heart, and then when I put it out to the masses and, like, say, like, 80% are, like, Wow, Calvin, that's when I'm like, all right, now I want to start talking about it. I just haven't found it yet. But we're still playing around. Do you have a particular group of, uh, not say a particular group of people, but do you have like a, um, do, you, do you put stuff out there as like a, uh, like a, on a test batch before you release it? Yeah, yeah. So like I have, I just invite my friends over. Like, uh, like the, the community is so supportive. Like, Still come by. Uh, if the tour director Chris McKinnon, you may stop buying sample stuff. So it's like we really just put it out there to the to the community and see what's up. Different people stop in and give their input. Like uh, one of the council members, city councilman member Dietrich came by. Shout out to Dietrich. Appreciate you tonight, my friend. But like, yeah, he stopped by, and uh, we just have different people who we'll stop by our friends in the community and taste, and that's how we gauge for right now what what's good or bad. So, Vicky, Vicky Frosto, Vicky, she'll come by. She's awesome too. So, you say Vicky? Name, yeah, Vicky Frosto. Uh, her daughter actually works. Oh yeah. Nice. Um. Have you had any uh, other meteries that you know of stop by and and chop it up with you? Yeah, like um, like Ron, uh, he'll stop by. Rohan, uh, and although like Jeff Murray, like uh, Wildflyer, we he hasn't stopped by the meeting, but he, uh, we've been to brew together. We were. There. Yes, we haven't had as many meteries stop by, but we've had people come and visit. So, and it, and if it's not at the meteries, we'll see them out when we're doing different samplings and stuff or at festivals. So, it's still the, the same family vibe. Do you guys have any more festivals or anything scheduled since everything's kind of started back opening up? Yeah, like uh, Texas Meat Association is throwing a festival. I don't know the exact date. I but um, they're uh, they're throwing a festival here soon. It'll be at Rohan, so I want to give them a plug, but I just don't remember the date. November sixth, my wife says. So November sixth, Rohan, uh, you know, will be Texas Me Best. Come support, come holla at us. You know what I'm saying? We'll be yeah. out there present some of the best meat you'll taste in your life, in <laughs> your whole entire life. Yes, yes. Yes. So shout out November sixth. Come holler, Rohan meter, y'all day. And look, if if y'all never been to Texas, 
especially like Southern Texas in November, you're doing yourself a disservice. Get away from your crappy, shitty weather, wherever the fuck you're at. Get down to fucking West Columbia, Texas, or wh wh where's it? Where's it gonna be at? This one's gonna be on the graves, like in Rohan. You gotta come. Like the vibe is so awesome. They got goat. So more like, like Central Texas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Regardless, any part of Texas pretty much in, in, in November is going to be more baller than where the fuck you're at. Get your ass down there to Texas. Go check out this festival, November 6th, and slam them meads and, and, and put let's help get Texas uh, a little more rep than, say, like uh, Minnesota and um, the Northeast and stuff like that. You know, let, let's put Texas on the map. For real. You'll, you'll love it. You'll love it. Awesome vibe. Uh, I, I'm... I'm dying to get out there. You know, actually, I have to say that my biggest disappointment, well, I say my biggest disappointment, one of my biggest disappointments to come out of this whole COVID thing was that now I no longer get to come to uh, Houston for my uh, BJCP meat test because I was totally going to make the drive down there to get, no, I, now my next, my test is in Denver. See, like, I got to reschedule mine. I don't know. I've been, because I think it's like a honor when you're, People sleep on you, right? Like, but if you walk in, you have it, you start this little notches festivals on your belt. I think it's just, that's all part of the journey. I really wanted that. I was bummed out when, it, you know, we weren't. But, you know, when is, when is your Denver test? Uh, my test is October 26th in, uh, like, uh, it's, like a suburb of North Denver, basically. It's Denver, but like North Denver or some shit. Are there still spots open? Um, as far as I know, yes. Um, I had to uh, contact a dude here in Arizona. His name's Carvin Wilson. I don't know if you know Carvin. I'm not familiar with The dude is a honey mogul. The dude has a collection of honey. Like, uh, from what I've heard, I've never really talked to him about it. But uh, people in the industry, yeah, the dude's got a collection of honey that would, like, Oh, that's what's up. I'm gonna have to check him out then see what he's about. Yeah. Yeah, he he's a he's a super super cool dude in the industry and everything like that. But yeah, as far as I know, it's October twenty sixth in Denver and they did have a have spots open. And man, I'm telling you, like I'm glad that they uh let my test because they're only supposed to give you like a one year from your when you take your online test to when you <laughs> practical test but because of the whole covid and everything they extended it out the next closest one was like santiago chile or something like that it's like dude i cannot fly to south america during covid to go freaking take a bjcp exam come on man now and those those like me exams are so like they're so you like you can't really find a whole lot of them they're not really available so like like close to the areas i've been you know so I'm gonna have to make sure come out to different holidays. Yeah, that, that's pretty much where I'm at, and we have to make a trip somewhere. And like I said, I actually already got it scheduled there, so I'm going up to Denver at this point. It's not longer. I'm I, I am doing it. Got to buy the airline tickets and, and and make that happen because uh, I want to say this whole TK and drinks things hinges on that, but like the whole precipice is like as somebody who's not a home brewer, I'm trying to like uh, it, at least show that I'm, you know, trying to be knowledgeable in what the fuck I'm doing and not just being some yeah. fucking jackass on the internet, you know, <laughs> so to speak. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. But I'm in the same boat, man. So maybe we'll end up meeting in Denver. Dude, I, I'm dying to meet up in person with you in some capacity and, and, and hang out with you. You're one of the coolest people I've, I've met in the meat industry, and I love our relationship that we have going, brother. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, same, same here, same here. Oh, thank you. Um, so I'm gonna let you get going. It's definitely getting to be late. Um, is there anything else that you want to uh, say to the meat community out there? Any other words of wisdom? Any other knowledge or any other information you want to put out there? Any whatever you want to say, man. Open forum. Well, you know, I uh, I just say I've met so many people. In the like I don't like uh, listed names or different meters. To all those who helped me, I just put a black thing. I just appreciate black thing. Black Bay wouldn't be where we are with all without all of the love, the support that we. So first off, just say thank you for everything. 
been out so uh, you know, putting that out there, uh, you know, hopefully you uh, get an opportunity to come rock and take take me visit. You know what I'm saying? One day, if y'all haven't, like, come taste some take me. I'm telling you, we got the bomb stuff out here. Not to knock anybody else, but I just feel like you know from what I've seen, people haven't really been exposed to it as much. So just come take some take me, see what we're rocking. I'm telling you, take some meters out here. We're on point. And I'm just a little guy on the map. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just one of the little dudes. But they got so many great meters to come and try. So come come holler at us, you know? So I guess that would be it. And then um, shout out, like I said, my wife, she really has been a big part of the business. Um, she's sitting in the background right now. But uh, without her, there'd be no Black Fairy. So we appreciate her. They're showing you love. She smiled and said, what's up? But, uh, yeah, but they just say thank you to her so um i guess was there anything else i think that'd be it and thank you for everything you've done and being my friend and really inviting me on the show like i know you're you're gonna make a, a huge not splash but you're gonna make like an earthquake up in this joint that's it tried to say something dope it ain't work but yeah but you you're doing your thing man and i appreciate you for having me on the show and then shout out to um to my to my people the, the, you know havoc and Grindfield, like for real like just going back to them they, for what they've done, if you don't know, like being an African-American business, just getting a little personal right now, we're African-American meter, and it's not about race, but like we face different challenges. And for, you know, a meter to acknowledge that you face and actually give us a shout out, you just don't know how much it means to us. So I will forever be grateful to them. So thank you. I think that's it. I got real. And that, yeah, I'm going to end on that note. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a solid note to end on. So uh, anybody out there, check out Calvin and Black's Ferry Meadery on all their social media channels, Facebook, uh, YouTube, Instagram. Do you guys do the Twitter? I don't do Twitter, so. We got a Twitter, but I think we posted back in uh, 04, so. <laughs> <laughs> we don't. Or Twitter was even, like, really a thing or anything, but so definitely <laughs> – uh, scope out Black's Fairy Meter. You search them on any of the social medias, they're going to pop up there, be live and in, in charge and everything like that. So, um, like I said, if you're into it, certainly if you're into sack meads, if you're into super heavy fruit flavors, super heavy baller ass, kick ass, all that stuff, give out uh, Black's Fairy a try. Scope out Texas meads because, like Calvin said, man, you're sleeping on them. If you haven't tried anybody from Texas, Rohan, Wildflyer, and I'm not trying to leave anybody behind, but get somebody. Try anybody from Texas. Unfortunately, even if it's not Black's Ferry, man, just give somebody from Texas a try because they're doing big things down there and, and shit's popping and you're going to you're gonna surprise yourself and you're going to be happy. Most definitely. Most definitely. Appreciate it. Well, thank you, brother Calvin, for being here today. Appreciate that. Much love. Uh, to you and your family and everything, and thank you for doing what you do there at Black's Ferry Meadery. Uh, anybody who's had your stuff is super, super appreciative. Oh, man, that means a lot to me. Right on, brother. Until we talk again next time, I will see you on the flip side. Let's show. Take care. Later. Later.